AMC stock could be sent to unimaginable levels because of this upcoming catalyst. The SEC may want to stop this, but can't. The shorts and suits are losing billions at an uncountable level due to the retail investors, i.e. the AMC apes. AMC stock can go parabolic as AMC works on becoming the biggest movie theater owner. The gamma squeeze on June 18th will be five times bigger than last week's, currently over 500,000 calls in the money, equal to 10% of the company's float. And you can literally see the naked shorting in real time using level two data across all meme stocks literally at the same time. Systematic dumping of 20 uh, million shares in one to five minutes intervals to break up price momentum that would trigger algos to buy. The best way to combat short ladder attacks is to place incremental buys, 0.3 or 0.5, and not just buy in whole shares, since it slows down and clogs up dark pools, limiting damages done by naked short attacks. Check out the following news clips, used for news and current event coverage, showing proof of dark pools and illegal naked shorts, as well as another billionaire in support of retail traders. Fears of a regulatory crackdown sending Reddit stocks down big today. Last night, GameStop disclosing that the SEC is looking into the recent volatility in its shares. That after SEC Chair Gary Gensler announced plans to review the current market structure, specifically payment for order flow. And on Monday, the SEC announced it is looking into any disruptions of the market, manipulative trading or other misconduct when it comes to some recent high-flying names. So as the SEC turns up the heat, what exactly will they be looking for? Let's bring in Lisa Braganza, former SEC branch chief. Lisa, great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. I think that there's a big question among some of these, you know, retail traders who are in these high flying stocks as to what is going on in the markets and whether or not their concern is real or not. It is pervasive. So let's go through the numbers here. According, these are Gary Gensler's numbers. 53% of total trading happens on public exchanges, which means that 47% does not. 9% happens in the dark pools. Do we know, does the SEC know what actually happens in these dark pools? The SEC has the ability to be able to look into that. The problem is that, you know, for this, this large portion of trading that isn't occurring on the public markets, it's gumming up the works. The, the way that um, the markets were set up was with an expectation, and, the, and the, the regulations are set up, was with an expectation that there would be public trading and that the prices um, that stocks were trading at would be available on those public uh, platforms, exchanges. Well, that's not the case for about half the trading that's going on out there. And the great thing about Chairman Gensler, I really want a Chairman Gensler bobblehead because he's just the best. I mean, he is looking at this, at the reality of what trading is today and saying the law is out of step. And, you know, that's the that's the sign of uh, somebody who's not a lawyer. And so it's just perfect to see. We, we have the ability to look into what is going on, and we should also add as a corollary that 38% of trading happens in off-exchange um, trading platforms, and so away from the public exchanges as well. Could you say definitively that things like naked shorting does not go on, given that the SEC hasn't really looked into the trading activity at, to date in these dark pools and in the off-exchange trading? which is subject to a, a whole different set of rules. I mean, do, do we know? Because the perception of this new generation of investor is that the market's rigged and that there are institutions and bigger investors who are committing effectively financial treason off exchange. And, and that is the huge issue that I think the, the uh, current chairman is addressing, that the trading in mean stocks, the, the fact that... Uh, that we have Reddit traders, people who are very active and who want to be investing, young people who are, are learning a lot and are, are passionate about this, but who lack confidence in the regulatory structure and in the system. Uh, that is something that 
you know, you need confidence in capital markets in order to have a healthy system for raising money for business. So this situation is something that I think he wants to address. My hope is that he's not just looking to, or the, the enforcement division is not just looking to come down on the Reddit traders. I mean, obviously, if there's insider trading that was going on, if there's, uh, you know, market manipulation that that's illegal, then, you know, they, they will find that. Um, I, I think it's a shame that GameStop's stock took a hit um, when it disclosed this uh, subpoena because, uh, you know, this happens all the time. Uh, the, the SEC can be doing an insider trading investigation and it will issue a subpoena to the company that uh, whose stock was traded and the company didn't do anything wrong. So there really isn't any reason for the markets to be reacting so negatively um, and for investors to be running from GameStop. Right. This is not a GameStop problem. It's a, you know, trading problem. With respect to the naked shorting, I don't think the problem really is naked shorting. I, I Shorting is a good thing. I mean, we, we have this balance that goes on. We have people who buy a stock and, you know, they want good things to happen. So they want the price to go up. But sometimes the price is too high. So how do we bring it back down? Shorting is one of the few ways that we can get that price back to reality when it's too high. Sure. And I don't think anybody's disputing the role of shorting in this market. It's a it's a it's whether or not naked shorting, which is illegal, has been illegal since the financial crisis actually exists and whether we know it it exists or doesn't exist when so much is traded off exchange. And, and there's less transparency to the market. But I want to get back to something that you said that I thought was interesting, and that is the SEC looking into these Reddit traders. Why would the SEC go after, in large part, what seems to be retail traders? I mean, if you took a look at, at what the CEO of AMC um, sent out yesterday in terms of 4.1 million individual investors that own an average of 120 shares of AMC, this group of people, this cohort doesn't seem like they would have their wherewithal to manipulate the markets, unless you see something that that isn't obvious to me, at least. Well, I think what the SEC would be looking into is whether there is some kind of coordinated effort to drive up the price. What's what's interesting here is that um, what you tend to see in a market manipulation is a pump and dump. And, you know, people take their profits. That's not the case here. So that's the main reason that I think the SEC should not be focusing on the traders uh, because they're they're not. Some of them, of course, are are getting out and and uh, taking some profits. But the vast majority are not. And that is not what right. the the um, the overall group was uh, advocating and was doing. So um, I think the real issue here is do we have systemic problems, not retail trading problems, not right. manipulation. Um, and, and some of it is going on um, undisclosed. Um, you know, yep. the SEC has the right to go in and, and look at what Citadel is doing and look at what these other big uh, market participants are doing. But how much are they doing it? You know, that's something we just don't know. Right. Lisa, thank you so much for your insights. We do appreciate it. Thank Lisa you. Lisa Berganza, um, former SEC branch head. Um, I, I think that is the interesting question that is, you know, are there systemic issues involved here that the SEC needs to look at at least because there is a lot that we don't know. And for all the people who are ready to say that naked shorts don't happen, that's definitely, you know, one opinion. There's another group of people who believe that it does happen, and there's so much off exchange. Do we know? Right. That's the issue. And it's nothing that we're going to say that's going to change their opinions, and sure. that's fine. And, and I'm sure it does happen to a certain extent. I've been of the belief that these derivative products that are creating synthetic shorts that are highly levered are part of the problem. I'll also say this. Don't think for a second, and I've mentioned this, I'll say it again, that hedge funds haven't hired people to infiltrate and, and watch and in some, in some capacity participate in some of these rooms without question. You want to investigate something? Go find those guys and gals because I think they might be at the root of this problem as well. Pete, what's your perspective from the options market point of view? 
Yeah, it, I'll tell you what, the, the volumes are absolutely extraordinary, Mel, and we've talked about that before when we were addressing AMC not too terribly long ago and going back to GameStop back in January, and the volumes continue to be there. And, and you know, the derivatives markets, uh, they're a great tool, but they also, you know, there, there are obviously uh, some of the uh, characteristics of it all that cause it to seem like it, it, it's a different way of trading, which it is, and it, if you know what you're doing, then that, I think that's very comfortable. For me, my biggest discomfort is that I don't know that a lot of the people that are actually trading in the derivatives markets right now completely understand what their risks are. And as, I, I, I don't know how we can uh, fix that, but they've got to get a better understanding of what's really going on and how much risk do they really have on. And I think that's part of the problem because she mentioned investments. These are not investments. These are trades. These are traders. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. Even the 100 share folks or the option folks, they are trading this. And so they're not looking at this as some sort of a, they're not, they're not seeing the fundamental story. They're not seeing a lot of the other aspects of it. What they're looking at is the opportunity for that squeeze of those shorts. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but they've got to understand much more about what they're doing and what their risks are. And that's my biggest concern right now as I watch this continually move to different stocks each and every day. Founder and co-CEO of Tasty Trade, Tom. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, we saw one of these uh, eruptions back in January, and February, going back to last year. Was the huge Robin Hood stampede? Uh, people really, uh, you know, getting into this game of very active trading, finding these very volatile stocks and options uh, to, to use in this way. Do you think it's just a phase? Uh, what, what's your your top level thought on what this means for the market? Well. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me on today. And it's great. Um, do I think it's a phase? No, no. I think it's 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 way bigger than a phase. I think it's a you're you're watching something or you're witnessing history, which is a transformational. It's almost like a, a transfer of one generation to the next or it's the opening up of the markets to a new generation. So, no, I don't think it's a phase. I think what we're witnessing right now is something that's actually really important and really cool to see. Is this the best way for a new generation to be engaging with the markets? Now, obviously, there's a lot of power in, in this sort of social viral mode of, of, of searching for names and trying to yeah. outsmart uh, the professionals. However, it also seems to come with paying tremendous premiums for out-of-the-money options that are going to expire in a couple days and just a lot of, of friction uh, and, and really just a lot of, uh, of room to, to kind of win or lose. So do you think that that's uh, kind of your best entry point? You know, I don't know if there is, like, like, it's a great question because I don't know, Mike, if there is a best entry point. You're talking about something that's never been done before. Remember, we're, you can go back and look at this business. I, I, this is my 40th year. And I go back and look at this business. We've been trying to introduce a younger generation, a new generation to the world of finance and investing you know, forever. And until Robinhood came along and until meme stops came, came along and everything like that, it's nobody's been able to do it. So is it perfect? No, I don't like it. I don't think it's the perfect way. But is it, are the benefits of what's happening right now 
um, going to outweigh any of the downside, I think a hundred times over. So the answer is in, in an imperfect way, it's a, it's a wonderful happening, if that makes sense. Tom, I know you've been in the business for a long time and you're not a psychologist per se, but to kind of follow up on Mike's point, this is a very different way of entering the stock market than when I did it in eighth grade with my babysitting money and I put $800 into a mutual fund that felt Uh safe, it felt like it was long-term growth. I mean, are these individuals just much, much riskier than I was? I mean, why would they be going after options with these premiums and these expiration dates as opposed to putting it in there and just letting it simmer and grow for some time? Is this just sort of a fast turn, fast cash generation? The world's changed. We call it kind of a, the, the outlook on what we call the rate of change or gamma has completely changed with respect to everything. Who would have thought, you know, after a Pan, who would have thought if we entered into a pandemic that big businesses could change as quickly as they ha- as they were able to? I think when you look at the in- makeup of the investor, what we're seeing here is the investor is a lot more nimble and a lot more capable of change than we ever thought. So what's what you're I, and and again what you're seeing here now too is a generation that doesn't have the same kind of wealth that a normal generation or older generation would would have when they're getting into investing. So what they're looking for is an opportunity to invest in something. And this is one of the reasons why digital assets took off. And it's one of the reasons why meme stocks took off. They're looking for something with extremely high volatility, which means it has an extremely high expected move. And in the end, what that turns into is something where they can say, hey, you know what? I can take a little bit of money and turn it into a lot of money. Now, is that the perfect solution? to long-term successful investing? No, but is it a short-term solution to engage an entire generation in the world of finance before they, when they're in their 20s and 30s, before they, in their 50s and 60s? And the answer is yes. That's why I think the benefits are so wonderful compared to the risks.